You have an apple. You have an onion. Ugh! Cancel. Nitro Reviews. Welcome back to Nitro Reviews, the only internet review show that is on top of current releases. Today, we will be reviewing the new Cartoon Network series, Apple and Onion. It's a relatively new show, so we might as well check out the potential it has for its bright future ahead. Are you kidding me? In all honesty, we've been planning on reviewing this show for a while now, but there wasn't really an urgency to do so, so we just let it sit for a while as we covered other topics. But as it turned out, we waited a little too long, and the darn thing just up and got cancelled on us. It only lasted two seasons, and in those two seasons, it doesn't seem like it left the biggest impact. And that is why we're talking about it today. The show left a lasting impression on us, and we want to do our part and spread the word about it. Before we go into what the show actually was, we should address something that I feel was a big hindrance to it. From the show's title alone, there's a certain expectation people would perceive from it. The title, Apple and Onion, would instantly trigger the memories of shows like Pickle and Peanut or Pig Goat Banana Cricket. And for those who were lucky enough not to remember these shows, Trust me when I say it's not a good thing that there is this comparison. Uh, these shows were very wacky and wildly out there comedies. There wasn't any sense of a grounded reality, which inherently isn't a bad thing. The shows just had terrible executions. So when you look at Apple and Onion, you immediately expect the same thing, and the show's advertisements kind of pushed this narrative. Adventures with Apple and Onion are coming to Cartoon Network. Oh. <laughs> Brand new, not boring, Apple and Onion, coming to Cartoon Network. It portrayed the show as being about two living foods going out on wacky and zany adventures in their food-based city. Which isn't entirely wrong, but it would be like if regular show completely ignored everything except the strange scenarios the characters found themselves in, in terms of comparing shows, regular show is actually a really good example here. In truth, Apple and Onion is more of a laid-back and grounded show. The premise revolves around titular characters, Apple and Onion, trying their best to live out in this big city. Many of the episodes revolve around them trying to pay rent, hold up jobs, buy food, and all of the challenges you'd face living on your own. It's only through these grounded situations that some of the wacky scenarios might occur. But just like regular show, they never break away from their grounded world. They acknowledge when things get strange, or when logic has just been flown out the window, and it's this that makes it stand out, where shows like Pickle and Peanut have failed. Contrary to what the visuals might imply, the show actually has a very dry sense of humor. Occasionally, you'll get some of the visual humor, but a majority of the jokes is through the dialogue. Anyway, how, what do you mean it's an eyesore? I see a sunset. That's weird. It must be something about art being subjective or something. Why on earth did you buy a one-way ladder? Because it was half price. Probably because it's a rubbish invention that didn't sell. That's actually what the person said when I bought it. Personally, I find this type of comedy an immediate step up from the mindless slapstick and gross-out humor of those other cartoons. But it is easy to miss the mark with this style of comedy as well. In order to make it work, you'd have to keep several factors in mind. First off, the writing needs to be well thought out. Unlike this script, which I can safely say, Apple and Onion nails. It's actually very easy to forget that the show's being written for children. The only reminder you get is when characters actually explain the definitions of some of the bigger words they use. Bed and breakfast. A service that consists boring, of providing a customer boring, with some... Boring. All right, you do it then. No one asked us to do this in the first place. It doesn't even need to be... Enjoy! The next factor to get right is the characters. When you have the back and forth deliveries, it's essential that you make the characters interesting to listen to. Apple and Onion might actually nail this aspect better than the writing. Every character in the show just bulges with personality. 
Even the side characters can express so much intrigue the couple of seconds they're on screen. And no two characters work better off each other than the main characters. It's astoundingly easy to get lost in their conversations. This then leads into voice acting. But I think I'll just let their performances speak for itself. What about these 1,000 outdated haystacks for only $20? If we find all the needles they surely contain, we can sell them at a great profit and therefore pay Patty's rent. Oh, it's gonna be even harder. Given all of this, I think it's safe to say that Apple and Onion gets its style of comedy so right. But I will acknowledge that this style of comedy isn't for everyone. You could compare the show's comedy to something like Bob's Burgers. And from my understanding, there's many who don't like its dry comedy. In hindsight, it could be why it got canceled. It's very different from the majority of Cartoon Network's current lineup, but I wouldn't put all of my bets on that. Cartoon Network just has a habit of canceling anything that's not Teen Titans Go. And that, no, that's not even a joke anymore. Like, I, no, seriously, it's, it's been renewed for an eighth season. And while many shows are usually canceled after two, this one's getting eight. It's very sad that Apple and Onion suffered this fate, but there is a silver lining here. Apple and Onion wasn't a narrative-driven show, it was episodic. The episodes focused on the daily lives of these two people. Each misadventure was its own thing. In that sense, the show's cancellation didn't leave it on some big cliffhanger, which makes it easier, right? For newcomers to experience the series for themselves, not having to fear reaching an unsatisfying conclusion. But that's a big reason why we decided to finally handle this topic. We had no idea where the show's future was heading when we first thought to review it. But now we know. The show's future lies in the legacy it leaves behind for those who have yet to see it. I can say, without a doubt, that Apple and Onion is worth watching. And that's really all that needs to be said. Well, this has been Nitro Reviews. If there's any shows you'd like us to review, wait until they're cancelled to recommend them. We'd like to be fashionably late to the party. Just like how you're fashionably late to hitting that subscribe button. But hey, better late than never. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next review.